Welcome to the Lowenstein Sandler podcast series. I'm Kevin Iredell, Chief Marketing Officer at Lowenstein Sandler. Before we begin, please take a moment to subscribe to our podcast series at lowenstein.com slash podcasts, or find us on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Audible, iHeartRadio, Spotify, SoundCloud, or YouTube. Now let's take a listen. Welcome to Terra Firma, conversations on commercial real estate. I'm Stacey Tyler. And I'm Stephen Tanico. Stacey and I are real estate attorneys at Lowenstein Sandler. On today's episode, we'll be joined by our colleague, Kim Lamott, to talk about lending. Kim is a partner at Lowenstein Sandler, a financing extraordinaire, and formerly the biggest Bills fan in New Jersey, and now the biggest Bills super fan in North Carolina. Thanks for joining us today, Kim. Thank you. I love that the bills got in there at the beginning. It <laughs> makes me happy. <laughs> so, Kim, we all know the financial news is all doom and gloom right now. So what kind of lending do you see actually getting done? Well, the good news is it is getting done, just probably slower and less frequently than before. I mean, listen, it's no surprise that that lenders and banks are tightening their underwriting standards, right? And the cost of capital is pretty much through the roof comparatively to what it's been. So the fact is, it's just much harder to get a loan, right? For everybody, period, right? But especially for parties who are looking to get financing on asset classes like office, retail, buildings, those obviously, with what's going on over the last couple of years, is the spot that is probably the tightest market. The good news is warehouse and industrial space is still a bit easier. Those valuations are holding stable. I'm seeing clients who are looking to get financing in that area, not really having as much of a problem, or at least not being so scared by the terms they're seeing. So, and even certain lenders have put full stops on providing loans to certain asset classes. That is not something that I'd like to say, but you didn't mention in the intro, but I've actually been on both sides. I was Prior, formerly lenders counsel, right? For years and years. And I worked at a firm where we did represent 20, 30, 40, 50 banks. And now I've been on the borrower side for a lot of years and still have a lot of good relationships with a lot of the regional and national buyers, right? Lenders. And there are some that just will not give loans to certain asset classes. And I'd like to try to communicate with the client early to know, let them know that too, because this is just not something you're going to be able to get right now. Construction, financing, and certain, depending what you're building, like where they're going to do it, location, all of these things kind of come into play in terms of trying to get financing and especially on terms that borrowers want, companies want. How are you seeing those terms change now in this kind of post-COVID environment? Yeah. I mean, listen, interest rates obviously are killer. Costs have have gone up. The banks are being very tight in terms of LTVs. They're being tight in terms of collateral packages. I mean, a lot of loans I see are so oversecured. And sometimes you can bring that up early enough to say, you you shouldn't have to give this, especially with your appraised value. But there's some fear, right? There's some fear in the market and especially with certain players and regional players, given what's going on with some of the um, other banks. So I think It's all things that I think people will deal with, but you really need to walk into it eyes wide open so that you're ready and prepared for those, the terms that are going to be coming your way. And also that it's feasible, right? Because the cost for obtaining the loan obviously has skyrocketed and there's a lot of loans that are coming due. So you just can't wait. You can't wait to the last minute. You can't be forced into terms that you're not going to be happy with and you're going to be stuck with. And you just don't want that. It's not ideal timing. So just you really got to try to get in front of it because it's not as easy as it once was. And there will be roadblocks and you may be having to go to multiple lenders just to get something that you feel can accommodate where the business is. Now, you mentioned kind of national banks, local banks, regional banks. Are you seeing a difference in... Or what is a difference, I suppose, in the way those banks are kind of lending? You know, obviously a national bank, a lot more capital to deploy versus a more local bank. Um, Yeah. So it does depend on the bank. I mean, some of the the nationals that I've worked with with clients lately, they've been somewhat accommodating because they do want to move loans, right? They, They do want to put money out. 
but it does depend on the asset class. And even with banks that I've had previous experiences with, things that never would have come into play are now in their term sheets. Like Just what? stricter standards, more frequent financial reporting, okay. really having eyes on things, not being so friendly with defaults and cure periods, over collateralizing, covenant compliance, things that requiring guarantees, things that maybe you would have had more flexibility to get out of. Now you can't. Now there's good and bad, right? There's also, you know, regional banks, sometimes people love the relationship, right? We have a lot of clients in middle market that they don't want a big lender. They have had terrible experiences with them. They want a little bit of a smaller bank. They want something that's a little more local that pays a little bit more attention to that. They want those things. They want that relationship. And the bank wants deposits, right? Too, like a big key of it. And I think that that has become really important. Relationships. Some clients have been burned by some of the larger banks and they are seeking that. But then you also run into some, a little bit of smaller and regional player issues. Like instead of having a weekly approval to get a loan done during underwriting, their credit committee is meeting once a month. So the loan takes longer. The underwriting process takes longer. It's taking just longer to get through the process to even get to a point where you have a term sheet signed and then you're going to produce loan documents. You run into some of that. And then a lot of it is a negotiation. I mean, I tell clients all the time, sometimes I know who represents the banks and I can tell them very honestly, this is going to be hard. They are not flexible. Sometimes they are not practical and they are not really healthy helping their client. So sometimes that even factors into it. Like this is not who you want to go with because this might be an impediment to getting this deal done because we have really, I've been through this before and even going through with banks or even brokers who are bringing financings to clients that are coming in. That relationship part, I think is important too and things to know. So, I mean, you're, you're saying a lot of stuff that sounds kind of daunting. What would you say your best advice is to a client? What's the first step they should be really taking if they're considering financing in the near future or refinancing? I mean, I know it's cliche, but to call me, <laughs> to call me. Specifically, I'm yeah. an important person. But no, really, I think the attorneys can add so much value. I mentioned before about being on both sides. A lot of times I can help facilitate the introduction to a bank that I know is lending in that space, is lending in that market, has a program that they need. I can get in front of that for them. Some of my clients know this by now because I've been able to do help them with this you know, in the past, which is great because they will come to me and say, here's what we're looking to do. We're looking to secure this building we just finished building. And now it's tenanted. And this is the area that it's in, in Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey. And I can basically, based on what the asset classes to know and where the valuation is, what they're looking for, have a sense of, okay, here's who may be a good fit. And I can give them that advice, right? And they're free to go to, they have an existing bank or a relationship, but in a market where we're at, I think it is important to get in front of those things, to get us involved early so that I can then help them hopefully save them time and money later. Sometimes they're just going back to their prior lender and realizing, here's the terms that we got. I'm like, ooh, these just don't, when I see them, they're not market or they're not what I've been seeing from other lenders. And just to talk through that with the client, I think that is really important. I think, unfortunately, it's not everybody does that, right? I think what more likely happens is that we're getting involved after term sheet stage. So we'll have a client reach out, getting a loan for XYZ property. Here's the term sheet that was signed last week. Take a look at it. Loan docs are coming. We'll get you engaged. Wish. I'm looking at the term sheet and I'm seeing things that either aren't in there or are in there that shouldn't be in there or terms that are off market. And at that point, it's really hard to negotiate out of that in loan docs, right? Because while a lot of those are not the law, they're not but most of them say this isn't binding. It's just with a basis to which to create the loan documents. Still, if you have to try to go against something that's already in the term sheet, you're at a disadvantage. The ability to do that and having the lawyers look at that at the beginning, at the outset, and help you negotiate those terms and that commitment letter is really critical. And again, it's true. It will save you time and money later. Because now we're fighting about something that could potentially blow up a deal, kill a deal. 
that you can't get around it. They're not going to give you this cure period. They're going to make you do some sort of covenant compliance that you know is going to be a problem. And now you can't get out of it. And you're five, six weeks in. Yes. To the negotiation. And you've lost time. Yeah. And especially, you know, I mentioned earlier about how many loans are coming due, commercial real estate loans. Like you have to get in front of those things because then timing becomes critical. Mm -hmm. It's just deals are not getting done at the speed in which they did. And now there's just such a more critical eye on the underwriting process. What's like the minimum time you'd want? What's like the runway you're ideally, what would you say is like, give yourself at least how many months? Oh, I mean, ideally three. I would want it. Oh, I thought you were going to say 12. So no, no, <laughs> not at least. Well, I mean, you have to be in the process, know who you are, hopefully by then, and then going through that process. Oh, like three months from choosing the lender, signing the term sheet to. Fund. Yeah. Yeah. To make sure you're not running up against any sort of time frame when your loan's coming due. But if you're bank shopping, that's a couple it of is, months. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is because you don't know who is not lending in certain markets. And for certain asset classes, it's just not something we we had to deal with. Money was just easier to come by. And the cost of it can shock some of the parties who are used to paying different amounts, right? And just it's so much more expensive now. So I think just again, eyes wide open while you're getting into that setup so you know when you can be prepared for some of these things and to talk it through with your advisors, you know, your accountants, your internal operations people, your lawyers, so that like you're all kind of on the same page as to what you want to, what's important to you. I mean, Kim, you did just hype yourself pretty hard as a lender's attorney. (laughs) So I think I'd be remiss if, and I'm not going to ask you as a magician to reveal all your secrets, but maybe one or two nuggets you could give us about what you would want to see in a term sheet that you wouldn't typically think about or see. So I kind of put it back to finding out what the client wants, what's important to them. It changes for everybody. Some people are very focused on rate. Some are focused on some amortization. amortization. Some are focused on covenants. Um, Some are focused on collateral. Some are focused on making sure that there's no guarantees that have to be given. I try to find out what is important to the client because those are things then that I can think through in my head as to what we need to make sure we focus on negotiating, not only in the loan documents, but in the term sheet as we're going through that process with potential lenders and making sure that those things get in there. If they had a bad experience with their prior lender and something came up where it was a huge headache for them, like a document providing financials, if they were overburdensome, if it just became an administrative headache, they couldn't do it because of the setup within the company, stuff like that, stuff they want to make sure they don't have to do this. They only have to give report semi-annually or annually to things that they want to try to push back a little bit, little things that have become important to them through the years, maybe because they've been burned by it. Maybe because of situations with what their setup is in house in terms of the parties who are handling and helping to administer the loan on the the business side. So I think a lot of it is client specific as to what they really want and what's important to them. And then to focus on making sure that those things are covered within the term sheet, that you're not waiting to a later stage where you're behind the eight ball or you don't have the leverage to try to negotiate it at that point. Or you're up against a time crunch and you just have to cave because you have to get the deal signed. Mm-hmm. So, so like say, it's always about KYC. Know your customer. Yeah, that's right. Thank you so much, Kim. This yes. about wraps up our time. This has been a very enlightening conversation. Thanks for helping us get a little smarter about lending. Yes. And thank you listeners for tuning in today. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow Terra Firma wherever you're listening to this episode. Stacey and I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to reach out to us at terraferma at lowenstein.com. Until next time, peace. Go Bells. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to today's episode. Please subscribe to our podcast series at lowenstein.com slash podcasts, or find us on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Audible, iHeartRadio, Spotify, SoundCloud, or YouTube. Lowenstein Sandler podcast series is presented by Lowenstein Sandler and cannot be copied or rebroadcast without consent. The information provided is intended for a general audience and is not legal advice or a substitute for the advice of counsel. Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome. Content reflects the personal views and opinions of the participants. 
No attorney-client relationship is being created by this podcast, and all rights are reserved. Thank you.